Hi guys. All right, we're going to start um, chapter five of Chasing Helicity. When we left off, um, Helicity and her mom were getting ready to head to the hotel for the night. Lost in her thoughts, Helicity was quiet on the taxi ride to the Lakeside Hotel. Her mother, too, was silent, the glow of streetlights casting shadows on her face and making, look, making her look older than she was. They pulled into the hotel lot, paid the cab driver, and got out. Helicity started to walk to the doors, but her mother sank down onto a nearby bench. Mom, Helicity sat next to her and touched her mother's arm. Are you okay? Mrs. Dunlap, Dunlap start, stared at the ground between her feet for a long moment before finally answering. I keep replaying what happened back at the house before the tornado hit, wondering if there was something that I should have done differently. She shook her head. We've all been having such a great time. Then the, tw then the town siren went off and phones started blaring emergency alerts. At first I thought it was part of a Memorial Day celebration. When people realized what was happening, they panicked. Everyone was shouting, scrambling to find family members, shoving one another aside. Mrs. Van Houten, Mrs. Robinson, other neighbors, they all ran back to their houses. Some people crowded into our basement and, and to wait it out. A handful got into their cars and took off. Andy was one of them. I should have tried to stop him, them. Her face sagged and she took a ragged breath, but I didn't. Felicity knew she was thinking about what had happened to Andy while he was on the road. She wanted to rescue her or to reassure her and tell her that nothing she had said or did would likely have kept those people or Andy from leaving. But the story was was coming out of her mother in a rush now and she didn't dare interrupt. I figured the alarms were just a precaution. I mean, the wind picked up and we heard thunder and saw lightning through the basement window. Rain too, very heavy rain, and then hail. But we've seen that kind of storm before. I never imagined it would actually be a tornado. Then, her mother's voice caught. She cleared her throat and continued. People say a tornado sounds like a freight train. They're right, it does. But they don't tell you what it sounds like when the train smashes through your house, when the windows burst and the furniture slams into walls and the roof is ripped apart and you're cowering one floor below. She raked her fingers through her hair. Her eyes darted back and forth as if they were watching the scene replay in the grass. They don't tell you that you'll scream until your throat is raw or that the smell, the stink of urine when the person next to you wets himself with fear. They don't tell you that someone who never goes to church will pray for salvation at the top of her lungs. Tears leaked from the corners of her eyes and streamed down her cheeks. She turned her head and stared at Helicity with a haunted look. And they don't tell you your soul will seize up with an all-consuming terror because you have no idea where your children are. Helicity stared back, frozen in her seat. After an endless moment, her mother blinked as if mentally shaking herself back to the present. She folded Helicity in her arms and gently rocked her. Oh gosh, I shouldn't have said that. No, Mom, it's okay. I, you, were all we could think about, too. And Andy and Dad, she pulled back. I st started to text Andy that I was safe. If my stupid battery hadn't died, he wouldn't have come after me. Mrs. Dunlap nodded slowly. She wiped away her tears and sat up straight. What's done is done. We can't change it. We can't help him. All we can do is help him heal. And to do that, we have to take care of ourselves, too. So come on, let's get inside. As she stood, a car drove up and parked a few spots away from them. A group of people emerged and started making their way to the hotel entrance. With their, sh with their shuffling gates, disheveled clothing, and blanked stares, they looked like a pa pack of zombies. She didn't recognize them, but she knew at a glance that they too were homeless because of the tornado's fury. Her and her mother's appearances must have conveyed the same thing, for inside the man behind the front desk greeted them with sympathy. Welcome, he said. I'm Ted. I'm sorry for what's, what you've been through. We'll do our best to take good care of you here. He indicated a computer a computer printout on the countertop. I just need your last name and we'll get you right up to your room. Dunlap, Felicity's mother said. The last name is Dunlap. Ted checked them off the list and handed them an envelope with the room number scrawled on the outside and two key cards inside. There's a complimentary care package in your room. Snacks and water and other items. If you need anything else, please just call the front desk. I can't guarantee we'll be able to get it tonight, but we'll try. There will be breakfast and coffee served here in the lobby tomorrow morning. And I'm told relief services are on their way. Felicity and her mother murmured their appreciation before heading to the elevator to find their room. As Felicity got on, she saw a dark-haired girl she knew from school walk into the hotel lobby with her parents. They all looked shell-shocked. Expressions Felicity she knew that she and her mother wore as well. She was glad the girl and her parents were safe, but she didn't wave or call out. 
She was suddenly too tired to do more than lean against the wall until the elevator delivered them to their floor. The room was a spacious suite with an L-shaped kitchenette and with refrigerator, sink, stove, and dishwasher. The care pack package the hotel manager had mentioned was on the counter. The kitchen opened up into a sitting room with two nondescript armchairs, a flat screen to television, and a pull-out sofa bed that someone at the hotel the hotel staff, Holicity assumed, had made up for them. A separate bedroom had a king-size bed, a large bureau, and another television. The bathroom was off the bedroom. Holicity hadn't seen many hotels in her life. Under other circumstances, she would have been excited to be there. She would have scouted out the pool and gone swimming, explore the other floors, and secretly enjoyed the novelty of filling the ice bucket from the machine in the hall. Tonight, though, all she wanted to do was shower and sleep. You go on and use the bathroom first, her mother sat down heavily in the armchair and dug the heels of her hands into her eyes. Felicity took two bottles of water and two sleeves of chocolate chip cookies from the care package. She put one of each on the table next to her mother and start, started toward the bedroom with the others. Her mother stopped her with an outstretched hand. Felicity took it and gave it a squeeze. Her mother squeezed back. In the bedroom, Holicity found packages containing several extra-large white t-shirts and pairs of men's cotton boxers, in case you need something to sleep in, a handwritten note on the top read. Puzzled at first, it suddenly dawned on her that her only clothes were the ones that she was wearing. The anonymous person's thoughtfulness brought a sudden burning lump in her throat. She took a tea and a pair of boxers with her into the bathroom and flicked on the head overlight, overhead light. She flinched when she saw her reflection in the mirror. Her hair was storm-tossed tangle. Her clothes and exposed skin were filthy. Her face and arms bore scratches from her struggle over the fallen tree to the hillside. She touched her tailbone gingerly and felt the bruise bl blooming there. She removed her shirt and turned. Red marks from the hail were already turning blue. They covered her back. Raven. An, an image of a beautiful horse, alone, injured, dying, or dead, crashed into her mind. Other m mental pictures, some real, some imagined, followed rapid fire. Her brother lying in a hospital room, a neighbor praying in her basement, her father's furious expression, her mother's haunted face in shadows, her eyes desperate, despairing, Andy's car flipped on its side, Andy trapped beneath the steering wheel, Andy covered in glass and blood, screaming in agony, jagged, edged bones protruding from his shattered arm. Suddenly, the full force of what had happened and what might have happened struck Holicity like a punch in the gut. Her breath caught. Her heartbeat pounded in her ears. A choking sob escaped her lips. And then, as it had in the cafeteria, her vision narrowed to a dark tunnel, and she thought, I'm going to pass out. All right, that was chapter five. We'll read chapter six tomorrow.